Ministers of Parliament are meeting today in a special session to pay tribute to the Queen. And senior members are set to take part in a rare Saturday meeting tomorrow to pledge an oath of allegiance to the new king. Earlier this morning, we saw a 96-gun salute to the Queen, each of those shots for a year of her life. And church bells have been ringing across the nation in her honor as well. For more on the new reign and the Queen's legacy, we want to bring in some of our experts. First, the authors of Queen Elizabeth II, The Oral History, Deborah Hart Strober and Gerald Strober, along with ABC News' Patrick Revel. Thank you so much for joining us, all of you. Patrick, I want to begin with you. We know that President Joe Biden now is planning to attend Queen Elizabeth's funeral. What more do we know about these 10 days of mourning uh, that are just beginning to play out and really have been planned for quite some time? Yeah, we know now that it's believed in the next few days Queen Elizabeth's body will be brought from Scotland down here to London. We believe that it will be by Tuesday already the Queen's body will be moved to Edinburgh and then down here it will be flown here. Um, and then it will lie in state for several days where people will be able to pass. It's expected that hundreds of thousands of people will try to come and pay their respects to the, qu the Queen while she lays in state here in London. And then we will finally reach, on the 10th day, we will reach the, the state funeral, which is really what this is all building to, and which will be the climax of this very highly choreographed ceremony when we will see, we expect, again, hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of people to try and descend on London to try and take part in that, in that ceremony. Uh, Patrick, thank you. Now to the authors of Queen Elizabeth II, The Oral History, Deborah Hart Strober and Gerald Strober. Deborah, you and Gerald wrote a book on the reign of Queen Elizabeth. It was published last year. Uh, you know, she wasn't a perfect person, nobody is, but she's been adored as queen for more than 70 years. Uh, we know what her role meant uh, to her subjects, but w what did her role mean to her? It meant a lifetime of duty, devotion. She loved her people. You know, if Diana was called the people's princess, she, uh, Queen Elizabeth was the people's queen. She touched the lives of so many people, and that was her aim. She wanted to be the people's monarch. Gerald, put things in perspective uh, for us for, for just a minute. The first prime minister under her reign was Winston Churchill. She's the longest reigning monarch in British history. What other legacies, there's so many, but just a few that she's leaving behind? Well, of course, Winston Churchill was her mentor, along with her father and her mother. Um, I think that she's leaving behind a legacy of duty, of 70 years of getting up each morning and doing her duty, fulfilling the task that fate had laid out for her. And just imagine the emotional and psychic and physical energy it took to do that. Also joining me now, ABC News Royal contributor Imogen Lloyd Webber. Uh, Imogen, this is the first time many people uh, across the world are going to be seeing uh, a British royal succession. I'm curious, how is it being handled? What can we expect to see? And just not on the pomp and circumstance front, but as we were talking uh, a few hours ago, you said you had this emotional reaction when you were watching what was happening today. Uh, there's going to be a very emotional aspect to what happens over the coming months. Absolutely. Um the Brits, we've lost our head of state, um, and the Queen was figurehead to a third of the world, to two and a half billion people, so we shall see how that plays out. Um, we've really lost this symbol of stability who is woven into the fabric of British life on banknotes, on stamps, and it's going to take years for the, sort of just the currency to catch up, as it were, with uh, King Charles III on the throne. Um, you mentioned that emotional reaction I had when I saw the speech, the first time we saw King Charles III talk as King Charles III. And it was very clear he was there mourning the loss of his mother, but is also very aware of the magnitude of what he's taking on. Of course, he's the most well-prepared um, heir uh, in, British, in, in British history. And he's 73 years old, he's been waiting for this moment on some levels for most of his life. Um, and it will be interesting to see where his reign goes. He was very clear that he knew that he's now becoming an institution, that he will be able to be less of an individual. 
and I'm sure that the new Prince and Princess of Wales, um, William and Catherine, will be taking on that mantle for him. Yeah, that would be uh, the gravity of that role alone, but also while he is uh, mourning the loss of a woman so important to him, his mother. Uh, Patrick, do we know anything about when King Charles's coronation will take place and what's going to happen? I mean, we believe any sort of coronation is months away. I mean, right now the focus is very much on remembering Queen Elizabeth and on the funeral preparations, but also, you know, just the, the immediate moves of Prince Charles became automatically king upon the death of Queen Elizabeth. But now already there, there are now more ceremonies and rituals that have to take place. Tomorrow we believe that he will be proclaimed formally king, and after that he will start having to visit parts of his realm. He'll have to travel around the British Isles um, as, as part of this ritual. And the, the, other, the other nations within the United Kingdom, in Wales, in Scotland, will have to declare um, that they are also proclaiming him king. And so there's already a huge amount of, of ceremony and ritual that has to take place even in these coming 10 days. And Imogen, finally, most people, I think, thought that Prince William might be the next king, uh, that, that his father might abdicate. That is obviously not the case. It, talk about the pulse of, of how the Britons are reacting to this royal succession. I mean, it, it didn't come with total shock. I mean, the queen was 96 years old. She had lived a remarkably long life. Uh, so I think people knew this was going to happen. It wasn't just like it happened 20, 25 years ago. But how is he being embraced so far? I think he really is being embraced, um, becoming that grandfatherly figure. Um, Prince William always made it very clear that out of respect for his father, that it was not on, that um, absolutely Prince Charles would be the next king. I think we're also aware that you know, Prince Charles has come to the throne at 73. His mother did so at 25. Uh, king Charles will, will not reign for as long. Um, so I think, again, the British people are aware that at some point through many of our lives, we will see another king. We will see King William. Deborah, Gerald, Patrick and Imogen, thank you all uh, for joining us and taking us through this this afternoon. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.